Hello everyone, my name is Bob McGoy. I'm one of the application engineers here with Computer Aided Technologies. What I'd like to do today inside of SOLIDWORKS Composer is show you how to control the, the item numbers in bill materials or parts list inside of Composer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our workshops and turn on the bill of material workshop. And I'm going to start by doing a selection, applying my BOM IDs to my selection here. And I'm going to use the actor name for my criteria for my BOM ID creation. Now the question is, where does a BOM ID come from? So if, if I select the component here, you can actually see that there is a custom property for that component, which is BOM ID, and it's blank. So what we need to do is tell the BOM workshop to compare certain things about all these actors and create a bomb entry over here so we can have a parts list. So what we'll do is we're going to do everything that's selected right now. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to generate a, a list. And what this did right now is it compared everything that was in the criteria for name of my selection which would be all the parts and generated a list of 23 parts here. But in this situation I don't want to do that. I actually want to call out the individual assemblies for this list. So let me show you how to do some of that. I'm going to hit reset my selection. So I see I no longer have those selected. And I want to go ahead and go into assembly select mode. What this does allows me to select the actors that are the assembly actors, not the actual individual components. So you can see they're selected in blue. With those selected, I can then say generate BOM IDs for my selection. And here you can see we have a quantity of two of the 23 series, one of the 24 series, and three of the 25 series. Even though they are assemblies, they have a BOM entry. Then I can come in and uncheck assembly select mode and select the individual parts at that top level and say generate a BOM ID for those and it generates a sequence after that. So now I have my assemblies and I have my parts all listed out so I have seven entries into my BOM. If I hover over them you can see the cross highlighting happening. Now these aren't actually a bomb, these are not actually a, an assembly inside a composer. So if I wanted to group those together as one part, maybe they didn't do it in the engineering side, how do I do that? So I'm gonna go ahead and box select here and do a reset of my bomb IDs. Notice that did not do anything to the assemblies. So I can click on the entry and you see there is number one there. And so I'm just gonna manually that one. So this is another way to do it click on this assembly, delete that one, click on this one, and delete that one. Or I could have selected the individual assemblies again and did a reset. So here, I'll go ahead and actually really didn't need to reset those, but while I'm in assembly select mode, I'll generate those. And what if I want to make one out of these components right here? So I don't want the assemblies, I actually just want the parts. So box select around these parts, and you can see the parts right here. So here I could actually do a assembly, um, create a selection set. What I'm going to do is go to the top, and I'm going to create a, an assembly group. And name that whatever I want. So I'll call this ODI-02-0 dash zero two dash zero zero two six. Grab those actors and drag and drop them into that group. Now with that group in assembly select mode, I can then generate a BOM ID for that group. So that's how you can generate your own assemblies inside a composer that may not have actually had an assembly structure inside of your CAD tool, be that SOLIDWORKS, be it Pro-E, be it CATIA, whatever it is. 
So these are a few ways that you can use to actually control bomb IDs. Hopefully you liked it. My name is Bob McGoy, and thank you for watching this video.